On today's episode of the Zen Sessions, we're joined by DL from the Van Bad Wolves. Thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. No worries. So we're mere weeks away from Deer Monsters being released. Um, getting excited? Uh, to say the least, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been a long time coming, I'm sure. You know, um, how have you found the change from starting out with the Acacia Strain on guitar and also bass, leading through the production side of things and the business side of things back to singing full-time for a band, sort of really for the first time? Um, you know, it's I, I, I kind of just tell everybody the same thing where it's just... Uh, same same job just a different suit right it's just um i think the thing that i'm kind of looking forward to now with bad wolves is the fact that i won't be uh, tied down with a guitar around my neck i'll actually have some uh some freedom to put the mic in my back pocket when i don't have to sing and, and give some high fives and run around a little bit and have some fun so um so yeah it's going to be kind of cool same gig different different uh suit though okay and moving into a new situation with new band um it sounds silly to say this, but talent does only go so far. Uh, you know, there needs to be a connection, a vibe. So moving into the Bad Wolves world, um, how did you bring your own vibe to the band? Um, you know, I, it's hard for me to say, uh, you know, to speak about myself like that, but I do know that just the first time that we all finally got into a room together and we rehearsed, um, we did some, some, uh, older songs and, and we just kind of, the band was trying me out and I was kind of trying the band out as well, you know, just checking, uh, vibe checking and seeing if there was the, the chemistry. And it was, uh, it was almost instant, man. The second we were in, in a room together, it just felt like a, a family reunion or something. And, um, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's just, uh, even, even the first kind of couple times that John and I had, uh, sat down to write together or something, there's just, uh, there's a lot of chemistry there. We all kind of, um, have the same, uh, goals in mind when we're writing and, and we all kind of, uh, we all kind of have the same taste when it comes to music. And, um, you know, even, even with that being said, it's just like when we write, um, first and foremost we, we write for ourselves and we write material that that we would um enjoy listening to ourselves so uh we don't ever really oh we need we need three radio songs we need three heavy ones like we never do any of that it's just like whatever organically happens we just we write for ourselves and um we write music that we would listen to so and when it came to the writing um how much of the material was already musically done when you officially joined so if I had to put a number on that, I would say like a 60% of the record was probably uh, done, pretty buttoned up by the time I came into this situation. And, um, you know, at that point, really the, the collaborative process between the, the, the guys and I started um, when I went to go track vocals uh, for the record, actually. It's, that's kind of when we started putting each song, each part of each song under a microscope and just kind of tailoring it to, to my vocal. And, um, you know, if there was a, if there was a verse that needed to feel softer or if there was kind of a, any kind of arrangement moves or anything, that's when those kind of things were, were taking place. And we really just started kind of collaborating on things and everybody, everybody in the room kind of, uh, took the producer's role, you know? Um, and I've kind of also said that, that it's, it's insane. I've never been, in a situation like this um in all my time being in different bands and stuff that uh it's crazy the amount of talent that this group has you know the each guy in the band could be a producer in their own right and, and really they they kind of are you know once we get into that kind of situation like i said where we're where we're kind of um working on arrangements and, and putting things under a microscope you know everybody uh at any given point any given guy in the room ha has great ideas and um it's almost uh it's almost impossible not to get like good work done when we're all sitting in a room together it's pretty cool and did you play any guitar on the album or just stick with vocals no no I would, especially this time around i was definitely uh really kind of hyper focused on on crafting uh, the vocal performance and um you know being mindful about uh the direction of where we were going with this record and 
you know, um, the, the former singer and I, even though we kind of have sort of the same range, we have a lower, lower singing voice. Uh, we do, um, stylistically, we approach vocals differently. You know, I, I'm definitely a more of like a kind of a pop based guy and, um, you know, and I think you can hear that in some of the tracks, even with lifeline or, or songs like Springfield summer or something there, there, there is a little hints of, of pop and R and B, um, yeah that they I don't that they didn't really do in the past so it's kind of cool you know they they get to kind of um expand on their their sound and and just kind of build on what they've always done yeah and and as the listener for me I notice a lot more sort of dynamics and a lot more harmony and um like you said pop pop sort of melody lines coming through um was that yeah. something yeah, that, that of- was important coming into the record was to change that sort of sound a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, even, uh, uh, you know, John, especially we, um, before I had even come into the band, um, as a, as a permanent member, um, you know, we, we had those talks. It was just kind of like, you know, what, what did you grow up listening to? What are you into? Um, kind of thing. And, and, you know, me before I, um, uh, before I even really got into metal or rock or anything kind of growing up, that was, that was, uh, I loved Michael Jackson. I loved voice to men. I loved all those kind of pop and R and B acts and, and, um, and taking like vocal lessons and stuff growing up. Um, that's kind of like what opened the door, made me kind of start paying attention to those guys and, and listening to those nuances in their voice, the vibrato and the way they kind of dip and the way they kind of sing a little breathier on, on verses and then like, let it kind of soar on choruses and stuff. So as you had mentioned, kind of, um, keeping dynamics in mind when it comes yeah. to um, the record. And, and the vocals seem to have a lot more space. Yes. You know, to me. Yeah, um, intentionally done. Yeah. So, like, thinking about some of the songs, like, for me, go, I've gone through the album about five times so far. Um, so, like, Sacred cool. Kiss, it, it sucks you in. Like, you don't know what's going to happen that first track. So tell me a bit more about, like, you know, what you brought to Sacred Kiss. Um, so that was just, uh, from the get go, it just felt like one of those, um, you know, even before we even had any idea of what the track listing or what the sequencing, um, was going to be for the album, that one always just kind of stuck out to all of the guys in the band, uh, as the, the opener track, because it just has like this, you know, that, that, that sound at the beginning and and the the way it just kind of. It's, it's, it's a perfect opener. It's kind of like an, uh, we have arrived kind of song. It's a very like, uh, arrival statement kind of song. So it was just one of those just organically. It's got set, set open and written all over it too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's one of those songs even that we've talked about possibly, uh, having it be like an opening song, you know, in a live situation or something. It just, it just feels like there's there's a lot of tension when, when it first starts and, and you're just, you're waiting for it to hit. So it feels, it's, it's cool. I love that track. Yeah. And the one thing for me, like going right down near the bottom of the album, so you've got classical, people are going to read that and probably form a judgment and then hear it and form another judgment. So tell me a lot about that song. Uh, classical. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just one of those, it's one of those traditional, uh, classical Bad Wolf songs, you know, it's it's got the really down-tuned guitars, the the really grooving kind of parts, um, just with the the big soaring melodic chorus, and uh, you know that that first even the intro riff, um, the first time I had even heard it, I just I couldn't even help I couldn't help but laugh at how like monstrously heavy it is. It's it's um. Yeah. You know, it's it's dare I say that it's even heavier than anything that I've done with with Acacia Strain in a way. Um, it just uh, I don't know. It's 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 a special thing that that this band has where they can do something like that, and then you know, uh, after it, there's a song like in the middle or or, or Springfield Summer. You know, it's it's crazy. I, that's that's my my favorite thing about this band: the fact that they can have um, a song that's almost as heavy if not heavier than a than a mashuga type band or something and then have a, a pop based song right and, after and it springfield summer is amazing like it it's going to cross over into a lot more um 
listeners' ears, I think, and, and they're going to be a little bit surprised by it. But again, like you talk about detuned guitars and things like that, and plenty of bands do it. There's nothing wrong with it that, you know, to give that heavy sound. But compared to previous sort of Bad Wolves releases, the one thing that I keep coming back to is space. The sounds on this album have a lot more space. And I think, um, do you think that the listener might be a little bit surprised when the album comes out and they actually spin it in full? Just how, while it retains key elements, it stands on its own so much better? Yeah, you know, I, I, if anything, I hope that they're um, pleasantly surprised that it's still the same band. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we really... Uh, put a lot of effort into maintaining what Bad Wolves is at its core. You know, it's a heavy, heavy band that has big, soaring, hooky choruses, and um, you know, we didn't want to, we didn't want to stray away from that. And I think we definitely, um, we kind of threaded the needle on, um, in between the the soft and the heavier, and and we there's definitely a record with a little bit for everybody. I know that, that a lot of bands, every time somebody puts a record out now, like that's yep. the, the cliche, like, Oh, there's something for everybody, but there really is on this album. Um, and that, that wasn't even done intentionally. It just kind of happened. And uh, the only thing that was really intentional was the fact that we, um, we wanted to make sure that it was a bad wolves record through and through. So was there any song that gave you the most challenge vocally? challenge uh yes uh probably not really technically but just uh just based on what the song is and um kind of like performance anxiety was singing uh in the middle because that song is it's kind of a tribute song um in the general sense but it's really a song about uh the guitar player doc's parents he, he had a rough year he lost both his parents in the past year and um so it's kind of a it's it's a it's a song um just kind of a tribute song to them and and you know man I, i've never been more nervous to sing a song in the studio like that especially with doc there i wanted to i really wanted to make sure that i i did it justice especially because you know even for him it's a special song and he's gonna have to listen to it years from now and it's, it's gonna bring up a lot of different emotions for him so yeah that was a that was definitely the most nerve wracking song for me to sing. Cause I just, I really wanted to, to make him proud and, and do it justice. So. Sure. And when it comes to sort of singing the lyrics, someone else writes, do you need to put yourself in a certain headspace when it comes to yeah. that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, we had worked on some lyrics together and stuff, but like songs like in the middle, it was, it was kind of put together. Um, ahead of time with the guys in the band and uh, outside writers and stuff and um you know in in a song in a case like that it's just uh before i i sing it i have to spend some time with it and i have to kind of form my own relationship with it um so that's definitely what i did especially with that um i heard it a couple weeks prior and i was just over and over kind of uh putting myself in in doc shoes you know i, I think everybody had a, a rough couple of years and um it's just, it's one of those, it's one of those situations where um, you have to kind of, you, you kind of have to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And, um, and I think, you know, even just most of the subject matter on this album in general, it's really relatable um, top to bottom. You know, there's, there's not, I, I almost, I almost don't like touching because I, you know, all the interviews that I've done and everything, it, everybody asks me like the meaning of Dear Monsters and then the meaning of, of certain songs and everything. And, and um, I know in my case, it's, it's almost, uh, I almost hate answering that question because it's just like, uh, there's been so many situations where I'm a fan of a song or something, uh, you know, not even talking about Bad Wolves, just, just music that I, that I enjoy listening to. And, um, you watch an interview with the, the artist that um, put that song out and they tell you what it's supposed to mean. And it's something completely different than what it was to you when you kind of formed your own opinion on it. And uh, sometimes that can that can kind of ruin uh, the perspective of the listener. So so I, I kind of um, I walk that line uh, lightly for sure when, when we when we start talking about um, 
meanings of songs and everything. And but yeah. Cool. Um, and for me, we live in a like I'm I'm 46, so I come from an album world, not a singles world. So we live in a a streaming and a singles world at the moment. Um, Dear Monsters is obviously put together as an album. It's not put together as a bunch yes. of singles. How hard was that track listing to get right? Not very hard at all. Um, once we had, you know, the, the the full spectrum of all the songs and we, we really all kind of were able to sit down and just kind of soak them in. Um, it was it was pretty easy to put together the, the track listing, to be honest with you. Um, just because every song has, uh, every song just has something different to offer. So it was just, it was kind of, um, like I said, it just, it, it, it's a journey, you know, you have to listen front to back to really kind of understand where the album goes. And, um, and it's tough because, you know, there's a lot of critics out there just, just based off of two songs right now. And, and it's, it's, it's one of those situations where um, I think the the tune's going to change quite a bit once the full album is is released and, and people can kind of take that trip for themselves. Yeah. Well, critics are people that are just uh, too scared to write an album themselves, aren't they? <laughs> That's it. Everybody's a critic. Yeah. So, you know, we all know that we're sort of in this weird limbo at the moment. There's going to be tours. Tours are starting in the States. Um, we're crossing every part of our body here for Australia for tours 2022. Um, right. You, you're going to have a mix of songs to play. So what are the old catalog songs that you want to sink your teeth into and put your spin on it? Um, you know, we, we talked a little bit about that. Um, still nothing set in stone, but you know, there's, there's a couple songs that I'm, you know, if we do do older stuff, if we don't, I'm not sure, but I, I love songs like I'll Be There from Nation. Um, Learn to Live is awesome. A lot of their, you know, even some of the deep cuts from Disobey and stuff, it's just like they, there's there's so much uh, amazing material that these guys have put together that, um that you know, it's, it's hard to say, but uh, but definitely I'll, I'll be there as one of those those tracks that's up there for me, you know, even coming into the band and doing rehearsals and stuff. Um, that was one of the songs, uh, even after we had finished doing the, the, uh, the set list for the rehearsal. Um, oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm good. There we go. Uh, yeah, even though we had done the... Um, the set list for the rehearsals a couple of times. That was something that, that was a song for sure that I, I like, let's, let's play I'll Be There again real quick. Cause uh, it was, it's just a fun one. You know, I, I love that, uh, that drum beat at the beginning and it's just, uh, I don't know, it's like kind of an iconic song for them. So. Cool. And as we finish up today, um, any words for the fans in Australia and the fans that are just going to be tuning in? Yeah. I mean, uh, really just, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open for uh, October 29th, the, the Dear Monsters records coming out and uh, we couldn't be more, more excited and we couldn't be more proud. And uh, we, we, we really can't wait to just take this, uh, take this journey with you guys. Excellent deal. We'll leave it at that for today. And um, I reckon we might see Danny some point in 2022. Um, I, you bet your ass. <laughs> Thanks man. Have a good day. Thanks brother. Thanks. Mm -hmm.